Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this another session of comprehensive course of echocardiography. I'm Dr. Rakesh Gupta from Delhi, and I'm going to take you to the journey of Indian of this Jorop Institute of Echocardiography since we started in April 2000, way back, almost 24 years down the line. This body, this society, this institute was a brainchild of none other than our own Colonel Prashar sir, who's amongst us right now, with an international blessing of our international father, Dr. Navi Sinanda. I always call him the international father and Dr. Parashar as the national father of Indian Academy. Two more people, Dr. H.K. Chopra and Dr. Samir Srivastava, who were always there behind us to guide these training programs ever since they were launched. Everybody, please silent your minds. That's concluding this session. Two people who are behind these programs, many of you must be talking to her again and again. And one is Dr. Narang, who is always there supporting from a bureaucracy, from a political purposes, and from the academic purposes in government license work. Well, this course content is powered by Legends in Cardiology training session by leading cardiologists in the field of echocardiography. Fortunately, we have a blessings of Indian Academy of Echocardiography, International Society of Cardiovascular Ultrasound, Alabama, USA, where Dr. Nanda is the president, Indian Academy of Echocardiography, which is founded by none other than Colonel Prashar, Delhi Medical Council, we ever, every time approach to get their permission to conduct these training programs. And CDM of a Northwest District, when the people, they come for hands-on training sessions to have a uh, permission from them to conduct these programs. Well, that's the only issue I can say, or maybe possible, like providing a state-of-art hands-on training. It was first conceptualized in the year 2000 to provide state-of-art hands-on training program to physicians and cardiologists. Possibly more than 5,000 people have attended this program till date. The first program was done in April 2000, and this is the longest running residential program in India in private sector. Without more than 5,000 delegates have attended this program. Some of them have risen to the level of director non-visit cardiology in major cardiovascular Innovation at all times, that is the most important thing is. That program is always better than before. Delegates, they are from all over the world. The few countries which can name over here, right in front of you. Next, the program is held when we do a hands-on session. It's done in a drop auditorium in the basement of Ashutka. They delegate this staff stay in-house accommodation. We have a guest house on first, second, and third floor of the same building. That's good for the safety of delegate, especially the female ones. Then these are the list of programs which we are conducting as on today. Right from basic courses, advances, transfers of agile, in-house, two dimension stain, peripheral vascular doctor, 3D echo program. And then we went on to do a PG certificate programs in echocardiography lasting for one year. Then we went on to Annamalai University and lately we are doing a one-year certificate program in collaboration with Vadodara and last international echo training programs we have been doing since 2014. Basic programs, we do it twice in a year in the month of March and April, October and November. And we have photographs from this basic programs when we did a didactic lectures before we had the COVID sessions. How is the hands-on program done? Even today also, is done for six, it was done for six days, four hours every day, total number of delegates were 35, number of echo machines were seven, instructors more than seven, and every machine has got five delegate and one instructor. And this is how the picture comes out to be, where we have a dedicated instructor talking about a hands-on training program where they hold their hands in teaching the particular person. But after the COVID, we moved in a different directions. We started doing online training program lasting for approximately five months, which you are a part of it. It's divided into modules and each module has got interactive lectures. 
innovative live online demonstrations and followed by interactive question answer sessions. And this is what we have developed a software of our own where we can take our machine online without any hassles and we can show a live demonstrations of a subject re related to whether it's chamber quantifications or VAPs. Then these people like you, they'll be coming for hands-on sessions in the month of October. The session would be 3.5 to 4 days, morning 10 to 1 and 2 to 5 in between a lunch break is there. <clears throat> Almost 10 faculties are there, more than 10 years of experience, one table, one, five delegates and plenty of patients. And the most important part is you see a plenty of patients during this time. And whenever we have interesting patient on a table, we show a live demonstration to all of the students which have attended this, which are attending these programs. In 2004, we started our August 2004, we started our first advanced skill training programs. It is four days program in the month of August, meant for already doing echocardiography for cardiologist physicians who want to upgrade their knowledge in this field. Talk less, show more is the idea. All live demonstration and very limited number of delegates. And this is one of the program which we did in 2018 before the COVID errors. Next comes, we started making this program almost live during this time. Every subject was demonstrated live and then recording was done, which was sent to practically all delegates. In 2014, we started the transesophageal echo training programs. It was twice in a year, month of January and June, live demonstration and training of simulator. Almost 20 delegates, two simulators, four hours of individual hands-on training on simulators. And fortunately, we are the one to have our own simulator in private sector in India, in Delhi. Then in 2004, we also started a physician survey training program. Like we went from city to city to conduct an awareness program for the physician. This is one picture from Bhubaneswar in 2018. Then in 2015, we started calling people for in-house training program. Here is a one girl from Myanmar. She's Nilaru. She is a cardiologist based in Myanmar, having had a training over here. Then one guy is a French guy who has moved from South Africa to France and a cardiologist based over there who had come and spent time with us almost a month. Then in 2014, we went on to Dhaka to do our first echo training programs in Dhaka. And that was done in collaboration with one of our leading international physician cardiologists who was an expertise in echocardiography, Professor Abdullah Al Mazumdar Sharif. And this is a few pictures. Couple of programs which we did in Kathmandu, Nepal. Then we did a few programs back in Sri Lanka. Here was in Pratap C. Reddy Auditorium in Lanka Hospital, which was earlier known as Apollo Hospital. In 8 February 20, just before a COVID, we did a program in Shahid Gangalal Hospital in Kathmandu. This is how the things have been going on. Lot many program and the last international program which we did in Dhaka from 25th to 28th January 2024 is the fifth Indo-Bangladesh Joint Echo Symposium. And this is how this program has come up over there. And we had a live demonstration of virtually all the cases along with our leading international physician, <laughs> Professor Abdullah Al Sharif Mazumda. This is how it was covered on TV at that time. Vidruk Chigisha again the Chigisha of the Pushikhan, a Vikal Punable Monocar, Bangladesh of Haruti, Vidruk Vishakura, Roxanabi report. So, this is what we had the hands on training program, and that's what we have been contemplating now. Instead of coming all the way from Dhaka to Bangladesh to Delhi, we do a conduct a program back in Dhaka for hands on. This is what fellowship program we have been doing in. India in Delhi. We went on to do an NMLI university and lately we have shifted over to Parul University at Vadodara. In 2019, we start, we did the first CD echo program along with one international faculty, Dr. Professor Luigi Badano. Another initiative 
when we people were talking of webinar we were doing webinar much earlier than that 2018 was the first time we started doing echo beat all over in india then g collaborative program the first one to start and that's what we did in 2019 and his colonel prasher delivering his talk on right ventricular systolic function in clinical practice one year program is very important we are in second year of a completion third year is recruitment is going on one year diploma six times contact program for 2 to 3 days mainly meant for persons already doing echocardiography or attended a drop echo basic program Possession of echo machine is mandatory along with the local instructor, and the second batch is appearing in May eleventh and twelfth, and is available on a Parul University Vadodara website. We devise our own state some some things. Here is a DVD which we published for the first time in two thousand sixteen. Then pocket guidelines in two thousand seventeen. I published a second edition of a Doppler book in two thousand eighteen. Devised a pocket drive in two thousand eighteen, and this is what the poster we distributed during the annual conference of the Indian Academy of Echocardiography at Mumbai. And last, this is new pocket guidelines which we have devised, containing all the formulas of valves as well as hemodynamics. A couple of views from our delegates. फिर से दोबारा बता देता हूँ कि मुझको एकदम रात को नींद में उठना पड़ा क्योंकि एकदम उसको टिके रखे सर और बोलते कि डॉक्टर नागपाल एमआर का स्वीर एमआर की फाइंडिंग्स बताओ तो अनेडर गाय फ्रॉम अमृतसर एंड दिस इज़ व्हाट कंट्रोलिंग प्रोग्राम हैव डन इन लास्ट टू इयर्स स्टार्टिंग में 43 टू 47 कोर्स एंड � and we did an echo in valves, two dimension strain in clinical practice, right heart and pericardium in clinical practice. And first time we did a congenital heart symposium completely devoted on a congenital heart disease. Recently concluded was first postgraduate certificate program in clinical echocardiography. And then finally, we are up to concluding the second postgraduate certificate program in clinical echocardiography in 11th and 12th May when this batch is going to appear in the exams. Very new initiative. Recently, we collaborated with British Association of Physicians of India Origin. Their training academy, which is known as BTA. BTA, along with NHS, has approached us to provide a cardiac sonographer from India. And our first student, after having training from us, has just got a placement in Lancashire University and just NHS test in UK. Now, we are starting another batch of almost 16 students who will be under us training from next week onwards, and they'll be appearing in their exams in October 2024. Upcoming mm -hmm. program, most important thing is hands-on training program for the people, for the delegates who are joining this program from Dhaka. And these are the three contact person, I'll say rather four, Professor Abdullah Al Shafi Mazumda, Dr. A.K. Munwal Islam, Professor Firoz, and Dr. Sahana Zaman. These are the four people who are behind this program in Delhi. We are starting a third PG certificate program in echocardiography and 17th advanced skill training in echo applications and technology from 22nd to 24th. And that's what we are contemplating in a time to come. Upcoming national program for the first time, Rajarab, talking of a global echo India or a global clinical echo India. We have to decide with the whole of our body sitting amongst the governing members. We have a certain legends in echocardiography, and I'm sure they are present over here. And first of all, I would like to request Professor Nanda, sir. He is a distinguished professor of medicine and cardiovascular diseases, University of Alabama at Birmingham, Alabama, USA. President, International Society of Cardiovascular Ultrasound. He is considered as an international father of echocardiography or a modern echocardiography by many prestigious organizations for his pioneer work. For us, he's an international president for our society. Recipient of the US, the highest civilian award for the immigrants, Alice Island Award. More than 1,000 publications, more than 525 originals, 17 books, including the lightest and the largest, most comprehensive test book of echocardiography from him. And request Dr. Professor Nanda, sir, to say a few words. Request, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Thank you,
Well, thank you very much, uh, Rakesh, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm really amazed how uh, this uh, whole program has grown uh, so vast uh, in so many, in just a few years, uh, despite the COVID pandemic. And uh, I think uh, I'd like to pay tribute to uh, Dr. S.K. Prasher, who is the father of echocardiography in India, for uh, actually starting this program uh, along with you, and also for you to carry on uh, this program uh, so in a, such a dedicated manner. And you have trained so many people in India now, more than 5,000, as you mentioned, have been trained under you. And this is the only program, I think, in India, uh, which offers a, such a comprehensive uh, training, including most importantly, hands-on training uh, in echocardiography. So this is the, something very, very important. And I also want to bring uh, uh, greetings uh, from uh, the International Society of Cardiovascular Ultrasound and the American Association of Cardiovascular, uh, American Association of uh, Cardiology of Indian Origin. And uh, I think uh, we have quite a few requests have come to me, and I think I've many times directed them to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rakesh Gupta, as well as I've directed some requests from United States also. I told them that if you're going to India, definitely make sure you go at the time when this course is going on so you can get some hands-on training, which uh, they may not be able to get uh, in this uh, country. And I also want to bring greetings uh, from my wife here, Kanta. Kanta, just say hello to Rakesh and everybody else. Uh, I think you can see her right there. Namaskar. Uh, so Namaskar. Yeah, Namaskar. Namaskar. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. We are always blessed with your blessings. And I always consider you and Dr. Parashar as my ideal. And that's what I would like to say. Again, paying a thanks to yourself and Auntie Ji, Mrs. Nanda, Mrs. Kantha Nanda. Thank you very much, sir. Right, thanks. Sir. I'll move on to the next national father of Indian Academy, if I go. He's the one person who created this academy, Indian Academy of Echocardiography. He's the one person who started promoting echocardiography in India. He was a past president of Cardiological Society of India. He was the past president of Indian Academy of Echo. He has been bestowed with many lifetime achievement awards from Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Then World Federation of Clinical Preventive Cardiology. He has been the co-author of the latest Indian Academy of Textbook of Echocardiography. Presently, he works in a heart center, Lajpat Nagar, in Delhi. And to me, he is my mentor and he always guides me. And only one thing I would like to say about him, he is very precise to time. And that's what his one of the speciality and his quality. And if you believe my words, I started this program exactly at 7 o'clock because I didn't want to bring an hour from him. Look, Rakesh, you are late by one minute. Sir, it's all yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Oh, okay. So thank you very much. And the to be very, very strict that the timing is because of my army background, that's all. So we have been carrying on this program for last 24 years. And I was a bit concerned when this online course started. And contrary to my belief, contrary to my belief, it turned out to be successful because the candidates who came for hands-on, they were very happy with their life, with this online program. Because possibly they were hearing the talks in a very relaxed atmosphere in their house. There was no stress of a continuous program from running from morning till evening. And then they had a sufficient time to revise the talk over the next five, seven days. During a physical training, of course, they are constantly stressed with the constant lectures from morning till evening and live demonstrations. Only thing that the live demonstrations will be done later on, not at the time when the, when the uh, lectures are being given. That was the only slightly limited background or so. But I think this, and the second thing was, because many of you have not opened a book and never read for many years, so many times they were sleeping during the lectures when they were the physical thing or so. So I think this, this anything which do the person who conducts it is the most important person. It is easy for us to advise, but the amount with the so many courses going on, how much tension and hard work Rakesh must be carrying on that you can well appreciate or so. 
Finally, I can always tell you that the first two lectures of this course are very important. They are the foundation of your course. A 2D echo followed by a Doppler and a color flow mapping. So do not neglect these lectures. Have a full clarification. Bola, have bola, clarification bola. both during bola. lectures and during live tradition also. And can you get a sufficient time to revise it also? So give all your attention to the first two lectures. And I'm sure with these lectures and when you come for this uh, uh, for hands-on, you'll be extremely benefited. So I think please continue with all the both books provided to you, all other things or so. And I hope you take a full advantage of this lifetime of this online courses. And I thank you very much for being here and give your whole attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. All your blessings have brought to this level of our work. Your expertise always guide us. And that's what we always keep on looking from you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. This is my performer. I can only say, I say in a very simple word is, if you go to a casino, you always listen that word over there. The more you play, the more you win. I say in echo choreography, the more you do, the more you learn. So in casino, the more you play, the more you win. In echo choreography, the more you do, the more you learn. And that's what my take-home message is. Let's move on to a very close friend of mine, Dr. H.K. Chopra, who is the vice president of this Jorop Institute of Echo Choreography, to say a few words. Dr. Chopra, can I have you over here? I'm sorry, I'm missing Dr. Chopra. Let me move on to another one. Dr. Samir Srivastava from Max Super Specialty Hospital in Delhi. Then we have certain national and international legends in echo choreography. This is one Dr. Abhijit Chatterjee from Kolkata. Dr. Devika Chatterjee from Kolkata. She's a HOD, non visive cardiology at RNTI, Institute of Cardiology at Kolkata. Dr. Devika. Then Dr. Sanjay Mittal from Medanta Medicity in Delhi. Dr. Ashok Gark from Jaipur, Dr. Atul Gupta from Delhi, Dr. Girish Verma from Kota. He has moved on to Udaipur recently. In one of the hospitals, he has become a principal now. Dr. Nandita Chakravarti from Calcutta, Dr. T.M. Agrawal from Delhi. These are all our faculties for our hands-on training programs. Dr. Ashish Saxena from Ludhiana, Dr. Asta Kansal from Bijinar, Dr. Sunil Bora from Bangalore, and Dr. Sanjeevni Inamdar from Pune. And we have recently one very important personality. He is a non visive cardiologist based at Mumbai Hospital at Indore. Dr. Vivek, if you are online, I will request you to come online and say a few words. Then, very, I'm really impressed with her in the sense she's an echo technician. And she helps in doing cardiac transplantation. And recently when she taught, tell, told me that I'm learning how to perform a mitral procedure from one of the international faculties. And she is based at Ruby Hall Clinic at Pune. Then we have certain international faculty. One of them is Luigi Badano from Milan. Dr. Fabula Soji from Italy. I'm sure Dr. Fabula is online. Then Dr. Mubarak Rashid, I'm sure Dr. I saw Dr. Mubarak Rashid. He has been a consultant cardiologist at Lanka Hospital, Colombo, Sri Lanka. He has been the past president of Sri Lanka Heart Association. He is one of the students who had come at one time to learn echocardiography in India with us in first comprehensive course in echocardiography in 2000 year. Dr. Mubarak, can I have you on the line? I, yeah, yes. I am. Can you can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. As you said rightly, I was one of the first batch students when I went there when I did my training. And so many courses had been done and I have gone for several courses and I can definitely say that this is the best course available in the world where you can have hands-on training. And Dr. Parasha is here and both of you do a great job in training echocardiography. And Dr. Shamir, I think he's there 
and i recommend to all students to join this course and learn their basics and then you will not miss anything in echocardiography thank you for your Thank you very much, um, Dr. Mubarak Rashid. Dr. Mubarak is a very close friend of ours and is based in Sri Lanka right now in Colombo. We do conduct many of our training programs in Sri Lanka along with him. Like lately, we did it last year. We did a whole two days training program in Lanka. First half was devoted exclusively on transesophageal echo programs. And we did almost 20 to 30 live transesophageal programs. And then next day, whole of the day, was devoted on echocardiography. One more person who has I saw has recently joined. I would like to call him upon Dr. Vivek. I saw you online. Please go ahead. Can you come online, Vivek? All right. Let's move on. Then we have Dr. Yadav Bhatta from Nepal. He is a postgraduate and DM cardiology from PGI Chandigarh. He is an international cardiologist from Scott's Hospital, director for cardiology at Norwich International Hospital at Kathmandu. He is a visiting professor to Manmohan Cardiothoracic and Vascular Center in Kathmandu and is a past president of Cardiac Society of Nepal. If I hope Dr. Professor Yadav Bhatta, he is online. Yeah, Dr. Rakesh. Uh, go ahead. Online. Please go ahead. Let's have yeah. your message. Yeah, I think it's very amazing that in a, in a short while, few years, the your institute your, has gone to develop so much of teaching uh, equivalence for all the echocardiography interested people. I wish you all the best, and uh, I'm ready to help in any way, whichever you want. Um, thank you, thank you very much, and thank you for being on the line. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Then he's Professor Abdullah Al Shafi Mazumda. He was the professor of cardiology an ex-director at National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases at Dhaka. He's the one person whom we collaborated together to conduct an echo training programs in Dhaka. And that was in 2014, the first one we did along with him. Can have Professor Abdullah Al Shafi Mazumdar on the line, if he's there. There are three more people from Dhaka, Dr. Muhammad Ullah Firoz, Dr. Sahana Jaman and Dr. A.K.M. Manwar Islam. All three of them, they worked in Dhaka in teaching professions. And I'm sure Dr. Muhammad Ola Firoz is online. Dr. Firoz? All right. So this is what is, if Dr. Vivek, are you there online? Well, friends, this is all what we wanted to show in an inauguration ceremony. And we have a couple of upcoming programs as we showed you over there. We can all the lines from top to bottom, right from Reena Dua, followed by me. And if none of us respond, is Dr. Parasha, sir, whom you can write and say these things, sir. Thank you very much for hearing us. And thank you very much, everybody from the faculty and the delegates to listen to these programs. And I'll stop over here for some time. And before we go in to start our first lecture today, just give us a five minutes breathing time and we'll come back again at exactly 7.35 for our continuation of our program. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for being a part of this inauguration ceremony of 49th Composition Course on Echo Hello. Okay, friends, I'll start with the basic of a topic. Couple of my requests, please silent your mic because it's going to make unnecessary trouble for other people. Second thing, we'll be taking attendance at every time during this uh, lecture session. And as we said in the beginning also, and which we have sent to you as a terms and conditions also, more than 80% of attendance and more than 60% marks are mandatory to get a hands-on, to get an online training program from Jirap Institute of Echocardiography. I've got a complete list of all the delegates over here. And similarly, I have a complete list of our delegates from Dhaka, Bangladesh. So anytime, whenever it will be convenient for me, I'll take the attendance to mark you present or absent. Let's talk about basic principle and introduction of MO2D echocardiography. Dr. Parashir sir said very categorically, look, this is the most important thing for any echo examinations. I'll be very slow 
And once I'm done, I'll be open for question answer session. You can ask me as many times as possible. Second, we'll send a recorded version of all of you at the, within the next three to five days on your email IDs. You may not find this version on your mobile app or a WhatsApp map. So you'll be able to listen to all these things on your email IDs. Let's move on to this first talk. The first talk, what we're going to talk about is basic principle of MO2D echocardiography. What we have to do, we have to understand the basic images. And for understanding these basic images, why we need an echo in a clinical practice and what the physician should do. This is what has become pretty old. You heard a murmur, whether it's systolic or a diastolic. You listen to a breathlessness subject. You want to see whether it's cardiac, respiratory or metabolic. You had a chest pain, you want to see a wall motion or normality. Patient in shock, you want to know the cause, whether it's hypovolemia or septicemic. Clinic time, you sound a heart murmur, you no want to know the cause of it. And your hospital, many patients get admitted with stroke, the cause of a cardioembolic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke. Preoperative evolution in a non cardiac surgery has become a routine in many hospitals, especially when they're looking moderate to high-risk surgery. And the list goes on, on, and on. And that's what echocardiography is. What the physicians have been doing for many, many years, just refer these cases to somebody else. Should we do that? Or should we do by ourselves? And that's what the aim of these training programs. Introduction of MO and 2D echocardiography. We have important definitions. We have a selection of a transducer. We need to know the position of a patient and placement of a transducer. And apart from that, we need to look what we drive is a two dimensions echocardiography. In this two dimensions echocardiography, what we have been talking of, nothing but something like we see an image where a heart moves and you can see it categorically. Remember, one time we did not start with two dimensions echocardiography. We started with M mode echocardiography. And now the M mode echocardiography occupies the last in this table of introduction of M mode and 2D echocardiography. Two important words. One is a resolution. Second is a penetration. Resolution is an ability to identify two different objects lying close to each other. Very simple way of asking this is, you stand on a highway on a midnight. Look at the car approaching to you. In the beginning, the two headlights look like a blob, single light. As it comes closer to you, they start separating out. As they further come closer to you, you can identify that this is possibly a car is. And when the car is standing rest next to you is, then you can see the size of those headlights is. What is the texture of those headlighters? What is the difference between these two headlights are? And that's what the resolution is. It means you have the best resolution when the car is standing next to you rather than a car which is far away from you. So in echocardiography, what do we need? In echocardiography, we need an evaluation of an object. This evaluation of object needs and identify the structures. And for identification of a structure, we need to have the best possible resolution. Next is penetration. What is penetration? Penetration is the depth. At what depth we are imaging a person? Now think of a neonate. His heart lies just behind the chest wall. Versus me and you, my heart lies almost 10 to 15 centimeter inside the chest. So in neonate, we do not need any penetration. However, we need a penetration in adult population. <laughs> so what is the implication of this resolution and penetration in clinical practice of echocardiography? The implication is, Based on this resolution and penetrations, we have a selection of our transducers. We have a low frequency transducer, we have a high frequency transducer. Low frequency means what? 
the frequency which is relatively lower means 2 to 5 mega 2 to 3 2 to 4 megahertz of frequency higher frequency means we have a frequency of 5 to 10 megahertz of a frequency when we talk of a lower frequency transducer they have a very good doppler study take up the first message take home messages the lower frequency transducers they have a good doppler study they have got a very good penetration but the near resolution is compromised on the other hand if you take a higher frequency transducer you have a poor penetration poor doppler studies but very high definition of a cardiac images in a close by structures so if you take a low frequency transducer you have got good penetration it means it can be utilized in adult populations if you take a higher frequency transducer does not have a penetration it may utilize in pediatric or neonatal forms that's not what the issue as on today is what we have an out transducer 2 to 0.5 3.5 to 5 7.5 to 10 and now the most important thing is the wide band transducer what is this wide band harmonic transducer is this is an amalgamation of a transducer which has got a frequency of 2 megahertz but it one works it works from 2 to 4 megahertz so what it'll do in adult population if i go back to my previous slide it'll do a very good penetration it'll do a good doppler studies but this poor near resolution will be taken by the harmonic component of the transducer by imaging at 4 megahertz of a transducer correct and that's why we call them as wide band transducer. And in today's era, if you try to find a non wide band transducer or a non harmonic transducer, you're trying to buy a Pentium computer in the era of I7, I9. So, this is something which was doing by transducer of 2 megahertz. Now we have a mega wide band transducer of 2 to 4 megahertz, which does good penetration. Good Doppler study, good near resolutions. However, when we look at the same population in pediatric or neonatal population, what we need to look, we need to have a very good definition of a cardiac images. And what is the most common abnormality in pediatric population? Shunts, abnormal structures. So it's an imaging which is more important in pediatric population rather than a Doppler study. We do not need penetrations. And in case we need a penetrations or we need a Doppler studies, what do we need to do? We need to do only switch over a transducer from 4, 5, 7, 10 megahertz back to 4 megahertz, 3.5 megahertz. We have a knob on a machine which tells you like you can shift over a frequency of this transducer from 5 megahertz back to 3 megahertz or 2.5 megahertz. Or you switch off a transducer, you change a transducer from a lower frequency, high frequency to lower frequency. And that's how we do in pediatric populations. Okay. Next comes for footprint is, what is footprint of a transducer? The part of a transducer, which is touched to the chest. Imagine if the size is too large, it will not insulate in between intercostal spaces. If the size is too small, it will be smaller for intercostal spaces. But large size of transducer cannot be insulated into a neonatal or pediatric transducers. Now look, many people, they are doing this kind of an ultrasound transducer and echocardiography. You cannot insulate the, this footprint. This is the contact point of a transducer, which is known as footprint. It cannot insulate this footprint into the chest of patient. So we need a smaller footprint for these evaluation. And the smaller footprint is of two different sizes. One is where is used for a pediatric population, neonatal population, and on top of that is adult populations. This is historic. Why I want to tell you this about phenomena is, many companies, they try to sell even this historic feed of transducer to Prospective buyers. 
What is the speed of crystal single crystal transducer? Is a blind transducer. We used to put on a chest wall to look for a very high frequency lesions or very stenotic lesion like severe aortic stenosis. That was a time we did not have a continuous wave Doppler in our probes. Now the same probe has got two dimensions echo, pulse wave, continuous wave, and a color dot. Everything is done by a single probe over here. This is abdominal. This is linear. So what we are looking for a echocardiography probe like this. Apart from this, we have a three-dimensional transducer, multi-planar broadband linear phase array transducer, but you have to buy at least broadband linear phase array harmonic transducer. And these are all obsolete, like trying to buy a Maruti 800 in IRF 2024. Single rotating crystal transducer, rotating transducer, annular phase array, linear phase array. They are just numerical numbers to talk about the kind of transducer which were available in the market long time back. and But they were the instrumental in creating these kind of transducers today. Single oscillating means a crystal used to oscillate at a very fast speed. Rotating means the crystal used to rotate at a very fast speed. Then multiple crystals were put in a rounded ring to have annular phase array transducer. And finally, this era of linear phase array transducer came when the crystal have been lying together in a linear fashion. Thousands of crystals are lying over here. And they are firing sequentially one after another to drive an image, to do a color doppler, to do a measurement and calculations. Next, this is what we use in today's practice, phase array transducers. This is curvilinear for abdominal. This is linear for peripheral vascular or carotid doppler. What is the difference between this phase array and a matrix transducer? Now, many companies have come up with, they have discarded even this phase array transducer over a period of time. Why? They want to get you a better imaging qualities. And when they started looking at better imaging quality, they started looking at matrix crystal transducer. What is the purpose of this matrix transducer? As I said, the phase array transducer is a line of piezoelectric crystals in one single line. But in matrix, there is a long axis piezoelectric crystal and short axis piezoelectric crystals. All of them, they form a beam width. And this beam, instead of touching the patient chest first, they will converge together and then they fan out. And with this, they give you a much better imaging qualities. I do not know much about other people, but I can assure you there are a couple of good companies which have come with a lower end of their machines with this matrix array transducers. This is what linear broadband multi-planar phase array transducer. You put on a chest. This is four chamber view, LA, LV, RA, RV. Rotate two chamber, LA, LV. IOTA, LV, and LA. All these things are made in one go by multi-planner phase array transducers. So you don't have to put or rotate all these programs or these transducers to make various views. Then comes the array of three dimensions transducer. And this is three dimensions transducer where we not only look at the length and the width, we also look at the depth of a patients also in the three dimensions transducer. At your level, certainly I'd not recommend at your level, but certainly it's one of the modality which is used in number of times in our clinical practice when we do echocardiography. And especially when I was talking about interventional cardiology, where echo has become the standard in certain important process like tower for performing, doing echocardiography, doing, doing tower, during mitral clips, during early appendage closures, that certain places we have this three-dimensional technology available as of today. Moving further, we have to understand our heart in the planes of the heart. We have to understand what is the plane of a heart. What do you mean by long axis view? This is long axis view. And this is short axis view. Long axis view is, look at my chest now. My... Iota is over here, 
you can broaden up the image at your point. This is what, just click on my image in your computers. <clears throat> It'll come in the center of your image. So this is my aorta. This is this is my aorta. And this is my left axis. You see opposite side. So if you, let me just say, this is my aorta and this is my LV apex. If you cut a heart like this, or you cut a cut section like this, this is long axis view. If you do a cut section like this, this is short axis view. And that's what is depicted over here. This is long axis and this is short axis. So if I'm talking of long axis, I'm looking at a cut section like this, and my probe would be keeping over here in long axis. Let me use this particular part, which we'll use as long axis over here. So I'll be using this as a long axis. So we talk of a long axis when we are cutting a heart like this. We talk of a short axis when you're cutting a heart like this. And when we are keeping our transducer almost parallel to our chest wall, suppose I'm keeping my transducer something like parallel to my chest wall, I talk of a four chamber view. This long axis, this short axis, this is 90 degree angle. But this four chamber view is almost parallel to my cut section of a heart, as if I'm sitting over here and cutting the heart into two slices longitudinally. So here is the cut sections. Look, I said long axis. Take a piece of a glass, cut my heart into the long axis. So this is my long axis cut of my heart. Correct? This is my short axis of the heart. And this is four plane of a heart is when we cut in the heart in this fashion. So I have got LVLA on this side, RVR on this side. So this is how we look at long axis view, short axis view, and the four plane views. Now in what position patient should lie? Patient should always lie in left lateral decubitus position. Why? To bring more of the heart closer to the chest. So if I look at this patient, this is what my long axis is. This is what my short axis is in this patient. Now, Talking of placement of transducer one by one. In adult population, we go from left parasol regions, apical, subcostal, suprasternal, and right parasol region. Everything has got its own importance. In pediatrics, we go from bottom to top. We start with subcostal region because we have to identify the structures. Then we come to apical, then we come to parasol, suprasternal, right parasol regions. At your level, always the left parasol window. Again, with pointing, this is left parasonal, apical, subcostal, right parasonal, suprasonal. So where to keep a transducer? This is left parasonal, left third intercostal space. We'll be repeating it again and again as many times as possible. If you keep a fifth intercostal space at the level of apex, this is an apical window. Then subcostal window at the subxiphoid process. Right parasonal and suprasonal windows. Now the question comes, how many views you will get it in these important issues? Don't get scary. Look, how many views I have to do with this kind of a things? No, it's just one go. Once you start doing echocardiography, it becomes a simple habit. These views, they get cropped up automatically over a period of time. What we look in parasonal long axis view? We look at Platt's view. Short axis view, RV, RN flow view, and I'm not going to talk about ductal view at your level. So let's start parasolar long axis view. Where do we keep the transducer? Third intercostal space with the index marker at 11 o'clock position. Now the word index marker. What do you mean by index marker of a transducer? So let me go back to my transducer again, and then we talk of index mark. Look, if you look at this probe, on one of side, either there is a groove or there is a light. Whatever the groove or light is, that's what we call them as index marker. And I hope that should be seen when we show a live demonstrations. So 
either on this side or on this side, we have index marker or a groove which tells you about this is an index marker is. So at this point, I would like to say is the first view is left parasonal window, third intercostal space close to sternum and the index marker at 11 o'clock positions. So how do I explain my index marker at 11 o'clock position? I have to take, yeah, good. So I presume this is a footprint of a transducer. Look at me, this is my third intercostal space. Third intercostal space. I, Keep my footprint in third intercostal space with the index marker at 11 of the position of a patient. So how do we look at? Here is a patient. This is right shoulder and there's a watch on the patient's chest. This is 12. This is 9. This is 6. This is 3. So here's the index marker that points towards 11 o'clock position. We look at a sternal angle. So this is a sternal angle. And if this is a sternal angle, just below the sternal angle is left third intercostal space. I'll repeat it again. Left third intercostal space, index marker at 11 o'clock position. So I keep my index marker over here, looks at 11 o'clock position, third intercostal space by using a sternal border. And I just put my transducer over there. And what I do get is a parasternal long axis view. So look, this is parasonal long axis view. If I rotate my transducer 90 degree, so the index marker, if it's the 11 o'clock position, goes to 2 o'clock position, this is known as short axis view. And I'm sure none of you must have read the surface anatomy during your medical college. I mean, I did not read it to be very precise. Behind the left third intercostal space, what is the structure? Is always a mitral valve. So this is a certain importance is we have a left third intercostal space index marker at 11 o'clock position. And what view do we get out here is we get the first view as plaques window. This is known as parasonal long axis view. What this parasonal long axis view gives you? Look, if you look at the surface and not me, what we are cutting over here? We are cutting LV, some part of LA and the aorta which is arising from this particular structure. Because we are cut is like this. And you look at the plaques window, we have some LA, some LV, and the aorta which is cutting it. So this is, we go from top to bottom, left to right. On top, we have place, we have kept our transducer, that RV free wall. Then we have an RV. This is anterior aortic root. This is posterior aortic root. Anterior aortic root is in continuation with interventricular septum. Posterior aortic root in continuation with AML. Then this is LA. Then LA free wall is continuation with PML as well as posterior wall. Here is a descending aorta. So all these things we have labeled over here is, I go again from top to bottom. Here is the placement of a transducer over here. This is RV free wall. This is RVOT. Then this is anterior aortic root. This is posterior aortic root. This is anterior aortic root is in continuation of interventricular septum. <laughs> posterior aortic root is in continuation of the AML. Then this is LA. LA in continuation with posterior mitral valve leaflet and the posterior wall. And this is descending aorta. <clears throat> what is the importance of this view? I always say these words. Many people, they come and ask me, sir, why do we want to do a plaques window all the times? I said, this man, it gives you tons of information. <laughs> what information does it give you? Look at my LV is bigger than my RV. If my RV and LV they become same size, it means something to do with my RV function or size. Now, next important thing, when this interventricular septum, this is anterior septum, this anterior septum, the basal part is supplied by D1 branch of LAD. The This part of mid part is supplied by D2 branch of LAD. Suppose I've got an anterior wall MI. How do I differentiate this is proximal LAD lesion, mid LAD lesion, distal LAD lesion? 
we decide by looking at the branches which are arising from a LED. The first branch which arises from LED is a D1 branch of LED and D1 supplies to proximal interior interventricular shaft. D2 supplies to mid interventricular shaft, mid second part of the interventricular shaft. If I put an interval MI by ECG, if I look at my echo, echo shows hypokinesis of basal interior septum, it means I am dealing with proximal LED lesion. And believe my words, I am sure many of you must be doing in a practice. If I happen to see a proximal LED lesion by echocardiography, NTOL MI, even if the my patient is stable, I am not going to do anything except intervention and as fast as possible. Why? Because this whole LED is full of thrombus. What the hell I am going to do with the thrombolysis? And that's what has happened in one of the classes when I told one of my students, look, this is how it has to be done. This person called me up after a few months. Sir, we did the same thing, patient and TOL MI. We did an echo, basal and septum was gone completely. And we immediately started shifting the patient to the next tertiary care hospital with intervention facilities. When we shifted the patient, pulse was 80, BP was 120 by 80. When the patient reached in 30 minutes time with heparin and everything, whatever we could give during transportation, his BP was only 80 and pulse was only 120. And we did an NGO. The LED was full of thrombus. There was no way even the thrombolysis could not save that patient by the time he reached to the hospital. And intervention could do a save patient because that the best part of intervention suck out the thrombus. And this is how the importance of basal anterior septum and mid anterior septum. Now, same thing looks for posterior wall. If suppose my posterior wall is ischemic, what will happen? I started developing a mitral regurgitation without any significant mitral value abnormalities. Very important phenomena. And if you're still in doubt, ask the patient to walk for a few steps and look at whether the MR has gone up or MR is still low. <laughs> then next comes RV or inflow view. Now, it's a very important thing. I said third intercostal space, left third intercostal space, index marker at 11 o'clock positions. Now, where is my RVRA? If I tilt my footprint slightly toward mediastinum, now, looking at RVRA, so what I get? I'll get RVRA inflow view. Here is RA, here is RV. You could see a coronary sinus draining into the RA. And this is one of the view which we utilize for calculating pulmonary artery hypertension to identify the various tricuspid three leaflets of the tricuspid valve. And we do a lot of things number of time. If we are doing a pacing, look what exactly many of you must have seen after the pacing patient comes out with congestive cardiac failure. Why they come back with congestive cardiac failure? Because their leads get impinged in between the leaflets. And the valve starts leaking. And today, number of times we are using echocardiography. When we are pushing a lead inside somebody's chest, whether the lead is entangling the valve reflects or not, if the patient has got a severe tricuspid degeneration or not. And that's what the implication is. Now, from same plaques view, third intercostal space, 11 o'clock position, we got parasol long axis view. Let the footprint tilt towards RVRA. Like it means, what do you mean by tilt? Again, focus on me. If my tilt is like this, third intercostal spaces, my RVR is on this side. So this is a tilt as the footprint start looking mediastinum. This is straight and this is a tilt looking at the mediastinum. So my RVRA would be seen with echocardiography and they'll become RVRA inflow. Now rotate this transducer 90 degree. From 11 o'clock, I come back to two o'clock position. Now the footprint, now this footprint is, the index marker is at 12 o'clock position. 
when the index marker is at 12 o'clock position and we are right and the footprint is looking towards an aorta, aorta is over here. If I keep it straight over there, it'll be tricuspid wall. Sorry, mitral wall. If I let the footprint looks towards aorta, slightly towards aorta, so what I'll get? Parasol short axis view at aorta. Mitral wall. Then going towards my left hip, then this is what papillary muscle and finally the apex will come because I'm looking sitting over here and looking at the apex in fact. Correct? So I'll go one by one. So this is Platt's window is, this is RV around flow view is, then we rotate transducer 90 degrees. The, the index marker is at two o'clock position. What are the structures? We can identify all three leaflets of the aortic valve. This is right cornicus, this is left cornicus, this is non cornicus. Why do you call them right cornicus, non cornicus, uh, left cornicus? Please? The right coronary artery arises from here. Now look carefully, you'll find the original right coronary artery in this particular view. Here is a right coronary artery arising from here. Here's a left coronary artery arising from here. And there's no artery which arises from here. This is a non cornicus. This is RVOT. Look again, if RVOT is bigger than LA and RA, it looks something wrong is happening. And this is only view where we see a tricuspid valve and pulmonic artery. So if I have to measure the tricuspid valve flow velocity, I have to use this particular window to look for pulmonic flow velocities. I can use this window for tricuspid valve again. I used an RVR intro view. I can use this window for tricuspid valve again. Another important view, utilization of this particular view is we look at the interatrial septum. This is RA, this is this is RA, this is LA. So we have an interatrial septum. We can look at a shunt across interatrial septum in this particular window. Next comes mitral wall. If I don't tilt anything anywhere, suppose I'm keeping at left third intercostal space, index marker at 11 o'clock position, rotate to two o'clock position, the first thing I'll get is the mitral wall and where we do a planimeter. Look in mitral wall, if it's a stenotic, the only way to calculate stenosis level is by doing a planimeter. And then the same transducer tip is hitting towards my left, hitting towards my apex. So first papillary muscle will come and then the apex will come. This papillary muscle will disappear and apex will come automatically. Now, what is the importance of these papillary muscles? This is attached to the lateral wall. This is attached to the medial wall. So if there's a papillary muscle dysfunction, what will happen? If there's a lateral papillary muscle dysfunction, you will find a significant mitral degurgitation in your echo reports. Similarly, the medial papillary muscles will give you another issues. The most important issue of two papillary muscles comes from the fact we have an entity where we call them as parachute mitral valve. What is parachute mitral valve is all the leaflets of the mitral valve, they go and get attached to one single papillary muscle because other is lacking. Third important papillary muscle is we do see a papillary muscle rupture in our clinical practice secondary to acute antimal wall MI. So we can see this non papillary muscle is present. And finally the apex comes. Look, this is what apex is. And all this apical territory whether it's septum, anterior, lateral or inferior, they're all supplied by LED. So whenever we look for LED territory, we always look at parasol short axis view at apex to see how they're contracting. Fine. So, if I have to repeat again, there are total views which are utilized in Black's window, Parson long axis view, then Parson short axis view at Iota, mitral wall, papillary muscle and apex, and RVR inflow view. Total six views which we utilize in day to day practice for doing a parasternal examinations for epicardial. This is Black's RVR inflow view. Parasol short axis at aorta, at mitral wall, 
at papillary muscles and finally the apex. Moving on from first position of the plaques window, we move on to apical positions. Now, if you remember category, when we were doing a short axis view, we went from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock position of index marker. Same thing in apical window is, instead of keeping at the third intercostal space, we'll keep our transducer at left fifth intercostal space at the apex. So here is a subject. This is not third intercostal space. This is left fifth intercostal space and where the index marker is at two o'clock or three o'clock position and the transducer is cutting the heart almost as if in two slices of the heart. The first view what we get, and this is what we have like really, really get impressive when you make this view is, this is known as apical four chamber. LA, LV, RA, RV. Always LV has got a papillary muscles. LA has got a pulmonic venous drainage. RA is smaller in size as compared to LA. Then RV is triangular shape and this is typically a bullet shaped structure. If this is bullet shaped structure, this is triangular structure, then these are valves, mitral and tricuspid valve. Mitral valve and tricuspid valve, they are identified because of their attachment of their leaflets. I'll hold this image for a second. Let me just try to hold it if I can. Look at the attachment of tricuspid valve, right? This is over here. And this is over here. So tricuspid valve is apically placed and hinge point is apically placed as compared to metal wall. So LA, LV, RA, RV. Now what do we need? Four chamber, two chamber, three chamber, five chamber. Reason for looking all these views are, we have to look for a coronary artery supply of these views. Now you can remember or write down on a piece of paper. This is four chamber view. This is septum and this is lateral wall and lateral wall is not a papillary muscle. Septum is divided into basal, mid and apical septum. Lateral is divided into basal, mid and apical lateral wall. Mid and basal septum, they are supplied by RCA, right coronary artery. Mid and basal lateral wall is supplied by circumflex and apical lateral and apical septum is supplied by LAT. Now the clinical question comes back again. It haunts you again and again, the clinical questions. What is the clinical question? Suppose you have got a patient with inferior wall MI. You look at an echo. How can you tell this patient has got a proximal to RV branch of infarction or prox after the RV branch of infarction? So what do we do in this subset of population? We do nothing, but we only do what we can do in echocardiography is. Look at the contraction of RV free wall. Look at the contraction of RV free wall. If RCA is proximally involved, the RV would be hypokinetic. And if RV is hypokinetic, the treatment of choice of an inferior wall MI will not be a sorbitrate. The treatment of choice of inferior wall MI would be IV fluids. You want to upload, you increase the load of RV so that better filling happens. Clear? So this is what the importance of this. Suppose you have got a papillary muscle ischemia of the lateral wall. You may not see a wall thickening of normalities, but you see a mitral regurgitations. When the leaflets are normal, it means why the leaflets are normal and the ischemia is, uh, regurgitation is present? It means something to do with the papillary muscles. And majority of these people who are circumflex disease, they don't come with a chest pain. They come with dyspnea on exertion. Why they come with dyspnea on exertion? Because as they move or as they walk, more and more mitral degradation happens. More and more increase in LA pressure happens and reflects to lungs. 
in RV and RA, giving rise to dyspnea rather than chest pain. Very simple way, looking at the anterior wall septum and the lateral wall. Mid and basal septum, RCA. Mid and basal lateral wall, circumflex. Apical septum, apical lateral wall is supplied by LAD. Now the question comes, how do we make from four chamber to two chamber view? I said we were at four chamber view at the apex. Index marker at two o'clock position. Now keep the same position. Rotate towards back to 11 o'clock position now. We started in 11 in plaques window. Came to 2 at short axis view. Now from 2 onwards, go back to 11 o'clock position. So from 2 o'clock to go back to 1 o'clock position, you'll have 2 chamber view which is anterior wall and this is inferior wall. Whole of the anterior wall is supplied by LED. Inferior wall, mid and basal inferior wall is supplied by RCA and apical inferior again supplied by LED. And if I rotate my transducer back to 11 o'clock position, index marker 11 o'clock position, what I'm going to get? I'm going to get a three chamber view, anterior septum and the posterior wall. Here is LA, here is LV, here is aorta. Mid and basal anterior septum supplied by LED, mid and basal posterior supplied by circumflex turret. Can you compare this view with some other view which I taught you a few minutes back? Nothing. This is a replica of the view of the plaques window. Look, we have anterior septum, we have a posterior wall, we have aorta, we have LA. And same replica is only thing is this is lying down and this view is standing. This view is standing. So we came from Two chamber view to make two o'clock position of the index marker to make four chamber view. Index mark rotating to 11 or 12 o'clock position, uh, one or two o'clock position, we make two chamber view. And further come back to 11 o'clock position, we, what we make is, we make three chamber views. And if you can't make a views in your clinical practice, suppose this is my plaques view is Correct? So I'll slide down to apical window. So what I'll be getting? I'll be getting a three chamber view. Now rotate clockwise opposite side. So this will be at two o'clock, this one o'clock position index marker and two chamber view. And further two o'clock position index marker, we have a four chamber view as we said earlier. So you can do any one of them. So, but this is how we do an apical window evaluation for four chamber. Two chamber and three chamber. And why we do it again and again is because RC is supplied by mid and basal septum and mid and basal inferior wall. Four segment with or without RV free wall. Mid and basal lateral wall, mid and basal posterior wall supplied by circumflex and rest all is LED. So one of you can say mid and basal septum, mid and basal inferior wall. The second person says RCA, 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 RCA. Other guy comes back again, says mid and basal posterior wall, mid and basal lateral wall. Circumflex, 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 circumflex. And the third person should say, rest all LED, 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 LED. So we have a total 16 segment of our heart. Four of them, mid and basal supplied by mid and basal septum. Mid and basal inferior wall supplied by RCA. So four segments. Then go back to mid and basal lateral wall, mid and basal posterior wall, four segment LCX. And eight segments are supplied by LED. So whenever we have a chances of acute anterior wall MI, the chances of shock are very high. Similarly, when we have a posterior wall involved, the chances of having significant regurgitation and breathlessness is very high. Because it's not the wall which is going to take a problem. It's the leaking mitral valve which will give rise to rise in left atrial pressures. And last, what we use is a parogative or modification of four chamber view is we drive five chamber view where it's not truly a five chamber. It's a fifth chamber is called an iota. 
And if I have to show it again with my transducer, you can enlarge your skin. This is what my four chamber view is. This is my footprint is. Let the footprint look towards my aorta. If this is like this, I just tilt my footprint looking towards my aorta. So what I drive is my fifth chamber view. <clears throat> this is aorta. This is becomes anterior septum. I'm not really sure whether this is posterior or inferior wall. This all depends on the papillomas. So we do not label as a wall motion territory for this septum or lateral wall in five chamber view. We always look for this aortic valve to look at the aortic valve gradients. Next comes subcostal window. And we use this subcostal window for looking at RV, RA free wall. Now the position has changed. If you look at the previous position that the patient was lying on left side of the chest. Now he's lying flat on his back. With the legs folded up, index marker at 3 o'clock position, slightly towards RV, RA. And what we get? We get RV free wall, RA tricuspid valve, interatrial, interventricular septum, and interatrial septum. Most important view is to look at RV free wall contraction in this particular window. And once we rotate a footprint, or we rotate an index marker from 3 o'clock position <coughs> to 1 or 2 o'clock position, what we end up looking at an IVC. Counterclockwise rotation of the probe with index marker at 3 o'clock position, rotating to 12 or 1 or 2, we see an IVC seen over here. And this is very important clinically. What is the importance of this IVC clinically is? If the patient comes in shock, we look at the IVC diameter. If less than 12 or 13 millimeter in size, we always say the patient is hypovolumic. This is like something like JVP. Remember those golden days when we used to put a hand behind the patient's neck, create a 45 degree angle and then look at what is my JVP is. The same thing we look at an IVC. We look at how much is my RA pressures are. If IVC is small in size, less than 30 million, 13 millimeter, then we call as hypovolume. And best example I always give this is Look at the patient who present with, with shock in your echo emergencies. We want to know the cause of the shock. How do we look for the cause of the shock? Else? First, I look at an IVC. IVC is normal. It means my there's no volume deficit. So that hypovolemia is out. Now I look at the cardiac chambers. My cardiac chambers are one. They're normal. So my cardiac chambers are out. If my cardiac chambers are involved, it means I'm dealing with a coronary artery disease. Now my cardiac chambers are out. Now I look at the valves. The valves are not leaking. The valves are not snows. It means even my valves are normal. My IVC is normal. My cardiac chamber is normal. My LV is normal. My RV is normal. There is no significant tricuspid degradation. So what is the problem why the patient is in shock? Once we rule out the cardiac abnormality in forms of a coronary artery disease or valvular lesions or right, right lesions like pulmonary embolism and other things, only other thing which is left is septicemia. And many of you who are the legends in your practice back at your place of work, you always understand and I always, I always say these words. If my patient is in septicemia, the treatment of choice would be noradrenaline. If my patient is a cardiac shock or cardiogenic shock, my treatment of choice is not a noradrenaline, it is be dopamine or dopamine. Or treat the cause at least. Patient of anterior wall MI coming with a shock, he needs an intervention. But he does not need a noradrenaline. So that's how we differentiate in a clinical practice. What's to be done in this subset of population? What's not to be done in this population? By looking at basic echocardiography. And that's what the clinical implication of this basic echocardiography is. Look at the guy who has got large IVC. And this guy is certainly not in shock. 
This is something like severe tricuspid irritation giving rise to IVC plethora. So we need to look at the cause why this IVC plethora is present. And every image tells you something why this is happening. Last, I'm not going to touch most of it. Instead of third intercostal space on left hand side, I keep a third intercostal space on right hand side. To listen to my severe aortic grills, we'll come to that topic later on. But I'll touch you one over here. When I look at my aortic valve severity, I look at five windows, six windows to get the maximum gradients. What are the six windows are? Aorta is seen in three chamber view and five chamber view in apical windows. When the flow is parallel to the blood flow. What do you mean by parallel to the blood flow is? Look, the blood is going from LV to LA. And here is my transducer looking at this over here. So this, we are almost parallel to the blood flow. So three chamber view. Next is five chamber view. Then third is subcostal window for looking at the aortic valve gradients. When the aorta opens up, look here, the aorta is opened up. We look at the third window of the aortic valve. Fourth is right personal window. And fifth is the suprasonal window. And the sixth one is right interior oblique view. And wherever we get the maximum gradient, we look at those gradient cells. And this is what the most important is right personal window. Large view is suprasonal. Now the patient is flat on his back. Keeping a pillow, not behind his head, behind the shoulders. Index marker at one o'clock position. And what do we get? We get ascending aorta, arch of aorta and the descending aorta. And we can see all three cranial vessels arising from here. Here is left common carotid, sorry, left subclavian, left common carotid and right innominate arising from here. We can look at a descending aorta flow. Look, we can see ascending aorta flow or a descending aorta flow. And this has got a significant value. For calculating ascending aorta, we need to look for a aortic stenosis. For descending aorta, all of us read that collapsing pulse of aortic regurgitation. So we look at the whether how much is the reversal of flow in the descending aorta is. And that's how we look at the descending aorta, both for ascending as well as descending. Coactation of aorta is another thing which we look at in this subset of our So many utility of individual view is present when we talk of doing an echocardiography. Lesser use window, we are not going to discuss it, but we do use number of times. They are the list of that. Then now talking about all these things, two dimensions echo is the backbone of echocardiography. Whenever we're doing other studies, the first we acquire a two dimensional image. Then we do a Doppler or mode examination are obtained after first having a two-dimensional examination. And next comes the word, look, nobody is bothered about echocardiography. He says, how much is my ejection fraction, man? By the time you end up this course or finishes the course, believe my word, the ejection fraction plays a minuscule role in a clinical echocardiography. I can see, quote a person who had a normal ejection fraction, died on the table, because the guy could not come off with raised LA pressures. But still we talk of ejection fractions. And for talking of ejection fraction, we are utilizing the multimodal, multiple images. One is 16 segment model, which I always teach about. Then second is a 17 segment model, little change of a nomenclature. And the last is a 19 segment model, which couple of machines utilizes in data practice. At your level, I'll say remember 16 segment model. What is the 16 segment model is? Four chamber view, two chamber view, and three chamber view. Mid and basal septum, mid and basal inferior wall. <coughs> RCA. Mid and basal lateral wall, mid and basal posterior wall. Circumflex. All rest with LED, 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 LED. Remember D1 branch of LED, D2 branch of LED. And TOLMI, if the basal interceptum is not contracting, think of a proximal LED lesion. If the basal interceptum is contracting, think of the mid LED lesion. 
Similarly, if you have a RCA lesion, the RU free wall is not contracting. Think of a proximal RCA lesion. If RV free wall is contracting, think of a lesion in R RCA distal to RV branch of heart. Then comes what is ejection fraction? Well, this is what is in guidelines even today, almost 10 years down the line. Anything more than 52 is considered as normal for males and more than 54 in females. And I always say these words, I'm going to repeat it again. The females has become more masculine than male as far as echocardiography is concerned. Now, the latest recommendation possibly they'll come in over a period of time in guidelines, which was proposed in 2019, anything more than 57% in male and 58% in females. So that should be in a time to come. And that's maybe coming down as recommendations over a period of time. 2015 was 52 to 72. And now we're talking of 57 to 68. Means 57, 58 should be the normal ejection factors. This is what we do in our lab. Whenever we don't have a good echo imagination, images, we put an agitated, we put a myocardial contrast echo into the heart. It comes and opens the hole of the LV, and you can see a visualize a very good coronary artery supply. Apart from perfusion into these segments, three dimensions echo, and last is three dimensions LV ejection fraction analysis, which is done itself by a machine. Myocardial performance index, we'll talk about this later on. And last, I'll say thank you before I start taking up questions. And before then that, I'll request and I'll call upon each and everybody present over here to mark their attendance and tell about themselves. Look, what is, where are they and what have been doing over a period of time. So I'll call upon Dr. Snehem from Maharashtra. Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Sneha Chamanda. I'm presently working as assistant uh, professor at D.Y. Patel Medical College, Kolhapur. I've done MD medicine, like general medicine. Okay, Dr. Sneha, great. Dr. Neeraj Jodke from Maharashtra again. Uh, hello, good evening, sir. Myself, hello. Uh, hello. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Neeraj, you have two lines open up. One is your mobile is on, second is your computer is on. So they're connected to each other. My computer is on, sir. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. I can listen to you. Yeah. Uh, sir, myself, Dr. Neeraj Jorke, I'm working uh, in a, a multi specialty hospital in Pandarpur in Western Maharashtra. It's a Taluka uh, in Solapur district. Uh, I am MD medicine uh, and working here as a consultant physician. Wonderful. Dr. Lalit Moon Bhardwaj, Assam. Good evening, uh, sir. I am Dr. Lalit Mohan Bhardwaj. I'm uh, DNB medicine and practicing as a uh, private practitioner. Okay. At what place in Assam? Golpara, sir. Golpara. Yes. All right. Dr. Jaivant V. Desh Pandey, Arunachal Pradesh. Speak loudly, Dr. Jaivan. Hello. Hello. Yeah, go I ahead. Dr. Jaivan uh, at Arunachal Pradesh, in, uh, working as a consultant in Government Medical College. Pediatrics. Pediatrics. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, Government Medical College. Okay. Great. Great. At which place in Arunachal Pradesh? Any city? Uh, Nahar Lagoon, near Itanagar. Near Itanagar. Okay, great. Nahar Lagoon, Itanagar. Perfect, perfect. Dr. Pankaj Kumar. Dr. Pankaj Kumar. Dr. Mani Chandra Sinam. Mani Good evening, sir. Good evening. Go ahead, Dr. Mani. Sir, I'm Dr. Mani Chandra from uh, Imphal, Manipur. Right now, I'm in Ames, New Delhi. I'm doing my DM critical care medicine. I did uh, MD anesthesiology. Uh, that means uh, I did my post graduation in the uh, All right, great. 
डॉक्टर इंदु पाठक Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Indu Patak. I'm working in SM Hospital Agrawal Neuro Care as a critical care resident doctor under Dr. Vikas Agrawal, sir. Okay, all right. That uh, Bombay Gaon. Uh, Dr. Prabhu Dayal Vishkarma. Don't mention. Meeting sir. Dr. Prabhu Dayal. <coughs> Dr. Shekhar Chakravarti, West Bengal. Yes, sir. Sir, I am Dr. Shekhar Chakravarti. I was the ex faculty of North Bengal Medical College. Now I left my government job in 2016. Hello. And I have developed my own clinic and my 50 bedded hospital in Shilibu. I am practicing as a consultant physician yes. over here. So I, I want to get trained under you. So, mm. Perfect. Perfect, Dr. Shekhar. Nice to yeah, see you. Yeah, I medicine and MRCP <laughs> and University of the three colleges, Royal College. Uh, Dr. Vandana Kumari from Bihar. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Vandana from Kisangan, Bihar and associated with uh, MGM Medical College, Kisangan. Yes, as associate professor in medicine department. Wonderful. Dr. Ashish Tamakar, Madhya Pradesh. Ashish Tamakar. Dr. Tushar Goel, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Dr. Tushar Goel. I'm currently working as senior resident in uh, MMU uh, University and Hospital in Solon in Himachal Pradesh. All right, great. Dr. Tash Mukund Bhai, Rajasthan. Dr. Harsh Mukund Bhai. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Harsh Kachela, and uh, I have done my MD medicine from BJM Samzabad. Currently, I am working as a consultant physician at my private hospital from Rajkot, Gujarat. Uh, Dr. Yogesh Lalit Kumar Ajmera. Dr. Yogesh Lalit Kumar Ajmera. Good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Yogesh. Uh, I am basically from Maharashtra. Currently, I am in Tabdarjang Hospital as a SRN Medicine Department. All right. Dr. Tanay Surjan, Madhya Pradesh. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Tanay Surjan. I am MD Medicine. I have done my MD Medicine in 2015. Currently, I am working as a consultant physician at my hospital in Pipariya, Madhya Pradesh. All right. Dr. Sukhdeep Singh from Punjab. Good evening, sir. I am working as medical specialist at Civil Hospital Batala, Punjab. Dr. Sukhdeep Singh. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Sukhminder Singh from Amritsar, Punjab, and currently working as a consultant physician in multi specialty hospital. Dr. Murugudanam from Chennai. Yes, sir. Uh, myself working in Railway Hospital, Chennai. I'm a postgraduate medicine. I did MD and DND general medicine. Great. Dr. Shiripad Gurupad Kore. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Shiripad Kore. I am working uh, in Pune. Uh, I'm a consultant physician and intensivist at uh, Pune. Thank you. Dr. Gurpreet Singh Dang from Punjab. Yeah, so myself, Dr. Gurpreet Singh Dang. I am MD Medicine. I am at present as a senior consultant uh, in uh, Manipal Hospital, Patiala. All right. Dr. Nikhil Agrawal from Delhi. Uh, Dr. Tejas Uttam Rao Bhosle. Maharashtra. Dr. Somnath Baliram, Maharashtra, Kavate Somram Baliram. Good evening, sir. Myself, Dr. Somnath Kavate. I have done my DND emergency medicine from Naran Ruzela, Bangalore. I am currently working as an emergency physician consultant at a multi-specialty hospital in Maharashtra, Usmanabad. 
डॉक्टर परसों प्रकाश चंद छाजर महाराष्ट्र गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर प्रफुल छाजे आई हैव डन माय एमडी मेडिसिन करंटली आई एम प्रैक्टिसिंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट यूपीएमसी मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड आल्सो अटैच विद अ मल्टी स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल एट नासिक महाराष्ट्र ग्रेट डॉक्टर सुरेंद्रन साची ए सुरेंद्रन गुड इवनिंग सर आई एम डॉक्टर साची सुरेंद्रन I am a consultant physician. I am running my own hospital. Great, Dr. Madan Singh Solanki, Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Madan Singh Solanki. Dr. Ravi Bala Mahajan. <coughs> Dr. Aman Deep Singh, Dhanju. <coughs> गुड इवनिंग सर आई एम रवि बाला महाजन वर्किंग इन एज एन एन एस नौजोन हॉस्पिटल खरगो मध्य प्रदेश गुड इवनिंग सर डॉक्टर अमरदीप संजू वर्किंग एज ए मेडिकल ऑफिसर विद स्पेशलिस्ट इन मेडिसिन विद पंजाब गवर्नमेंट आई हैव डन एमडी मेडिसिन ओके डॉक्टर लखविंदर सिंह मुल्तानी सर अनमीट योर माइक सर जस्ट अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ सर यस प्लीज गो हेड सर आई एम डॉक्टर लखनऊ सिंह मुल्तानी फ्रॉम अमृतसर आई एम ए चीफ मेडिकल कंसल्टेंट at season hospital amritsar and i did md in medicine from gmc amritsar great 1980 good evening sir good evening sir good evening good evening sir my name is don dr bhosle sir dr tejas uttamra bhosle from maharashtra sir my mic was on mute sir okay fine fine i just marked you present yes sir thank you sir डॉक्टर रोजा रमानी फ्रॉम हरियाणा बांदा रेड्डी रोजा रमानी हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग आई एम डॉक्टर रोजा आई हैव कंप्लीटेड माय डीएनपी मेडिसिन फ्रॉम दिल्ली एंड प्रेजेंटली आई एम वर्किंग इन ए प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल इन हरियाणा ग्रेट डॉक्टर अनंद दीप वर्दा पंजाब डॉक्टर अनंद दीप वांडर फ्रॉम पंजाब डॉक्टर शीतल प्रसाद सिंधे Good evening, sir. Go ahead, Doctor Sheetal. Uh, I am Doctor Sheetal Shinde. I have completed my MD Medicine. Currently, I am working as a lecturer in Government Medical College. Doctor Mahananda Shalendra, Maharashtra. Hello. Go ahead, Doctor Mahananda. Yes, sir. Uh, I had completed my MD medicine, practicing as a physician and working as an emergency medical officer in private setup. Okay, which place are you working? Uh, Raigad, Maharashtra. Raigad. Doctor Yogendra Deshwal, Haryana. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I am Doctor Major Yogendra Deshwal. So I did my MD medicine, and now I am running my own hospital in Charki Dadri, Haryana, sir. Oh, great, Doctor Ritesh Kumar. Uh, good evening, sir. I am Dr. Major Ritesh Singh, MD Internal Medicine from Army Hospital Research and Referral, Delhi, Kant. And uh, I am an ex-serviceman. Now, presently, I am doing private practice in my hometown in Eastern UP. Okay, dear. Dr. Himendra Kumar Verma, Chhattisgarh. Hey, sir. I am Dr. Himend Kumar Verma. I am from uh, Rajendragon, Chhattisgarh. I am MD General Medicine. I am working as as SR in uh, Government Medical College, Rajendragon. Dr. Mangesh Maho Manohar Dande. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening. I am Dr. Mangesh from Nagpur, Maharashtra. I work in Dubai for a few years in CCU. But currently, I am not working anywhere due to some family issues. My parents are bed uh, bound now, so I'm on I'm on break for a few years. I'm in Nagpur now, but planning to start my practice next year again. Doctor Sunil Pokaram Chaudhary, Uttar Pradesh. Good evening, sir. I am Doctor Sunil from Noida. 
working as consultant internal medicine in prakash hospital noida dr kuldeep vyas from rajasthan hi good evening everyone i am dr kuldeep vyas from jaipur rajasthan i am currently i am working as a senior resident in sms medical college jaipur thank you sir dr kuldeep singh uttar pradesh Doctor, good evening, sir. I am seeing. I am working as a pre, uh, consultant physician in private hospital in Aligarh. Doctor Tanmay Roy from West Bengal. Uh, hello, sir. I am Doctor Tanmay Roy. I am MD Medicine. Now I am working as an assistant professor at Raigon Government Medical College, West Bengal. Doctor Rohan Gupta from Maharashtra. Uh, Good evening, sir. Doctor Rohan Kata. I am the MD Medicine. I am working on my own private setup in Bandikuri, Rajasthan. All right. All right. Uh, Doctor Gunjan Walsange. Good evening, sir. I am Doctor Gunjan Walsange. I am an anesthetist. I am in from uh, Maharashtra, Akola district. I am running my own hospital. Now I just started with the, my ICU setup along with maternity. Great, Doctor Akshay Deep Dalip Firodia. Good evening, sir, and good good evening to all of you. Myself, Doctor Akshay Firodia. I completed DNB Medicine from Saipi Hospital, Bombay, in two thousand twenty. I am uh, uh, I am recently working in Ahmed Nagar in private hospital. Wonderful, Doctor Darshan M Karnataka. Doctor Sriman Beg. Hello. Uh, Go ahead. Hello. Hi, sir. I'm Dr. Salman. Uh, completed MD medicine, and I've been in private practice uh, at my uh, at my place, which is near Belgam in Karnataka. Dr. Atindra Narayan from Delhi. Uh, good evening, sir, and good good evening to everyone. I am Dr. Atindra Narayan, working as assistant professor in the Department of Medicine at National Cancer Institute, AIMS, New Delhi. Thank you. Dr. Anil Chaudhary from Rajasthan. Yes, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Anil Chaudhary, uh, working in my own hospital uh, at Siroi, Rajasthan. <coughs> Dr. Sukhdeep Kaur, Punjab. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Go, go ahead, Dr. Sukhdeep. Dr. Sukhdeep, uh, uh, working as a senior consultant at Kalara Hospital, Ludhiana, Punjab. Great. Dr. Ripon from Assam. Uh, very good evening, sir. I am Dr. Ipan Sutia from Assam. I did my post-graduation from Assam Medical College, Dibrugar. Currently, I'm working as an anesthesiologist in the district hospital uh, in Assam. Wonderful. Dr. Amit from Bihar. Dr. Amit from Bihar. Dr. Amit. Dr. Pare Nitin Rao Sahib. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Darshan M. I am the general medicine sir. working in a private hospital in Mysore. Dr. Chandrika Kiran Nair. Good evening, sir. Dr. Nitin Pare here. Okay, Nitin. Okay. Hello, sir. Dr. Chandrika Kiran Nayak. Hello, sir. I'm Dr. Chandrika Nayak from Nagpur. Uh, I, um, I'm continuing in your course from 48th to 49th, uh, and I'm enjoying the course. Like, uh, I really felt good that I was not qualified in the 48th course so that I can continue with your 49th course. You are a great teacher, sir. Don't scare and, them up, you know. Like, these are the people who could not qualify last, so they had to come back for to get their certificates again. Mm -hmm. So, so, but this is a good opportunity to continue with your course. Otherwise, I would have missed your lecture for another six months. Like, all right, sure. Doctor Sanjan Roy. Good evening, sir. Uh, I, Doctor Sanjan Roy, working as a uh, CCU in charge in Dinata Hospital and also uh, physician in Dinata Hospital, Kuzbihar, Oshbhar. Okay, Thank great. Doctor Ridhi Chand Meena. 
Good evening, sir. This is Dr. Balgir from uh, Pune, Maharashtra. I am working as a consultant physician in Pune. Dr. Samsul Kamar, Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Samsul Kamar, I am MD. I am work in cardiology center in Nepal, sir. Dr. Jitesh Ji, Kerala. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm current. Uh, I did my MBB, uh, MD from uh, GMC Amritsar, and I'm currently doing my DM critical care from Ames Rishikesh. Sir. Dr. Jeel Balas from Gujarat. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Jeel, MD Medicine, currently doing uh, critical care medicine at Marimbo Sims Hospital, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Dr. Baljit Kaur Sina. Evening, sir. Sir, this is Dr. Baljeet. I have done my DNB from Chandigarh. And now, sir, I'm practicing in a private hospital in Itawa, UP. Great. Dr. Naveen, Dr. Rajesh Tiwari. Dr. Rajesh Tiwari from Madhya Pradesh. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, Rajesh. Uh, I am, sir, repeater batch of 48 to 49. Okay, great. From... Which place do you belong to, Rajiv? Rajiv? Sir, Sujalpur, near Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Near Bhopal, Sujalpur. Dr. Yes. M.S. Naveen Kumar, Delhi. Uh, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, I did MD medicine and I'm currently working as senior resident in pulmonary medicine, Saptajan. Wonderful. Dr. Mohabbat Pal Singh, Punjab. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Mohabbat Pal Singh, MD medicine. I'm working as a uh, medical specialist in district of Gujarat. I'm continuing from 48 to 49. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Dr. Rajesh Tiwari, Madhya Pradesh. Good evening, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Ajinkya Divekar from Maharashtra, Satara. I am uh, working as a consulting physician. I am running my own setup in Satara. Dr. Raghavendra Khanapur, Karnataka. Dr. Raghavendra. Dr. Santosh Patar, Karnataka. Uh, good evening, sir. Go ahead, Santosh. Yeah, uh, this is Dr. Santosh Patar, sir. Uh, I am from Karnataka. I have done my MD general medicine. Uh, and presently, I am working in uh, as a senior specialist medical officer in uh, health and family health department, government of Karnataka. Wonderful. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at many questions right now over here. I'll be coming back to Good the... evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah. My Dr. Prabhadal Vishwakarma, uh, chest physician, doing uh, my own uh, doing private practice and running my own hospital. From Varanasi. Prabhu Dayal Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma, sir. Yeah, due to some my problem, I cannot communicate, sir. Prabhu uh, Sir, good evening, sir. This is Dr. Raghavendra Khanapur. Good evening, sir. This is Dr. Raghavendra Khanapur. Because of my issue, I couldn't communicate, sir. Uh, so, this is Dr. Raghavendra Khanapur. Uh, I did my MD radiology and I did MD medicine, sir. And presently, I'm working in a critical care in Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. Wonderful. Dude. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Myself, Dr. 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 Singh from oh. Hajipur, Bihar. One by one. Good evening, sir. Akash Tamrakar. Akash Tamrakar. Good evening, sir. I am doing my SSC uh, DNB medicine from Surat. I am working as a senior resident in Jhansi Medical College. All right. Good evening, evening sir. Evening. Myself, Dr. Dr. Amit Kumar Singh. Yes, sir. Myself, Dr. Amit Kumar Singh from Hajipur, Bihar. Uh, I am doing my uh, private clinic at uh, hometown Hajipur, Bihar. Done my uh, DNB family medicine from Delhi. All right, let me move on to a people from uh, Bangladesh. Dr. Sahana Jaman, Shahanab Jaman. Dr. Tariq Mahmood. Dr. Maria Bilkis, Dr. 
जिस्ट <laughs> आंसर you can raise your hand i can see your names in the list of my questions anybody would like to ask and my request very simple request is please do not use your laptop on a tab without your name like somebody is coming with lenovo tab m10 next time i'm not going to take an attendance attendance would be taken by google automatically and as soon as they'll pick up the name of lenovo tab m10 they'll mark you absent So questions. Go ahead with the questions. You can raise your hand. So look at the buttons on the right side of a screen. Reactions. In reactions, there is a word. Raise your hands. Look, I have raised my hand. Go to reaction. Raise your hand. So I have raised my hand. The same way. Good. <clears throat> Let's start with Dr. Gunjan Walsinghe. <clears throat> Dr. Gunjan. Question. With the views only, as you have, uh, so can you please once can you specify which uh, which structures we will be able to see in P lax view special specifically? Yeah. I'll come back as many time as you want. Like I'm not in a hurry. Neither you should be in a hurry. As many time as you want, I'll be there to help you out. So let me go back to my presentation again. Look, this is plax view. So, what do we look? We look at the RV free wall. RV 
anterior aortic root, posterior aortic root, this is aorta. This is interventricular septum, anterior interventricular septum. So anterior aortic root is in continuation, anterior interventricular septum. The posterior root is in condition AML. Then LA free wall is in condition with posterior maternal leaflet and posterior wall. And here's a descending aorta. If you rotate your transducer 90 degree, or uh, let the footprint looks towards RVRA, you get RVRA inflow view. And rotate your transducer 90 degree, you get parasitic short axis view at aorta, mitral valve, papillary muscles, and apex spinal. Sir, Correct? Sir. Questions? Hello. Sir, can wait, you wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, I'm going to call you. Don't just... Okay. Are you comfortable with your answer? Sir, not still that much comfortable with the specifically with the pre lacs flow actually. I am a little bit confused. This act is okay. I am okay with it that we are going to rotate and we will do. Correct. So, so my answer would be go back tomorrow if you have an assist to machine, just do it relax tomorrow at your place of work. Okay, I will try it. And one yeah. more question pretty much when you were showing with that uh friend, whatever the yeah, Gunjan, I'm not able to hear your voice properly. Uh, now, okay. Better now. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to clear that when the probe detects, uh, detects on the probe will be towards the right sternum. Means it will be towards the ele at eleven o'clock, right? Correct, correct. Take it with tomorrow with my machine, and then I will let you. Yeah, once. you use any transducer, anything. Just make a view. Yeah. Forget about the perfection. At least start with the basics. Okay. Actually, I tried with uh, once. I tried. I have that probe along with. Uh, do it tomorrow, you will do it. Do it as many times as possible, you will come out perfectly well. Great. Thank you, Harsh. Go ahead. Hello, Good evening, sir. Good evening. I just need to know the how to, uh, where to place the marker and uh, uh, in what position should be a transitor uh, should be there to view three chamber view. Perfect. Three chamber view is like we go to apical four chamber view at index marker at two o'clock position, bring back to one o'clock position, oh, with yeah. chamber yeah. View. bring yeah. back yeah. to one o'clock position, yeah. three chamber view. Are you able to hear me? Uh, so sorry, sir. I can get it because of the noise. Index marker at 11 o'clock position in apical window will give you three chamber view. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. I request everybody, please silent your mic. That's more important, you know. When your turn comes, please, uh, you can ask me again. Next is Dr. Sachi Surendran. Sir? Go ahead. Uh, I am not able to understand the... 16 segments, especially the uh, lateral wall and the inferior wall. How to visualize? Look, this is how we look at uh, views now. Let me go to four chamber view first. These are four chamber view, two chamber yes, view, sir. three chamber view, right? In four yes, chamber sir. view, we have got six segments. Basal, mid and apical septum. Basal, mid and apical lateral wall. Six okay. views, six segments. Then okay, sir. basal, mid and apical inferior wall. Basal, mid and apical anterior wall. But in three chamber, we do not have an apical anterior septum, apical posterior wall. We only have mid and mid and basal posterior wall, mid and basal anterior septum. So six view, six segments of four chamber, six segments of two chamber, and four segments of six, three chamber view forms 16 segment model. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, in four chamber view, we are seeing lateral wall and uh, septum. 
In fourth chamber, we were seeing septum and lateral wall. Correct. And in uh, two chamber view, we are seeing anterior wall and inferior wall. Correct. Okay, sir. And in three chamber view, we are seeing anterior septum and the posterior wall. Okay, sir. So there are two uh, One is septum, second is anterior septum also. Sir, sir, I am sorry. There are two septums. Yes, sir. One is septum, second is anterior septum. Uh, septum and anterior septum. Correct. Four chamber, okay, we have got septum. Three chamber, okay, sir. anterior septum. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, sir can we uh, tell this uh, inferior septum, sir, uh, uh, in four chamber view or at a septum? Look, what is the basic issue is when we talk of a wall motion abnormalities, we utilize two different kind of a model. Like somebody asked me infro septum, basal infro septum, mid infro septum, apical septum. Correct. But the problem is when we go to the machine, machine is not talking of 17 segment model. Machine is still talking of a 16 segment model. If I'll teach you 17 segment model, once you'll go to the machine, you'll not be able to recollect which segment is which. Like this is basal septum is called as basal infro septum in 17 segment model. So my humble request with you is listen to 16 segment model. If you go to Philips, G, all of them has got 16 segment model in their machines. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And if you want to recollect, so remember both of them together. <clears throat> Dr. Neeraj Dodke. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Neeraj. Sir, regarding the placement of the transducer uh, while viewing the short axis view, uh, I have a query. Uh, uh, while viewing the short axis view at the mitral valve, uh, we keep the uh, probe at the uh, third intercostal space pointing towards uh, the uh, 2 a.m., the 2 o'clock position. Am I correct? Sir? Correct. Bilkul correct. Yeah. So while viewing the short axis view at, at the papillary muscle and the, at the apex, do we have to tilt the transducer or, or is there any other? The footprint looks towards where? Left hip. Okay. If so you want to see aorta, left the footprint looks towards right shoulder. So we have to tilt the transducer. You have to tilt the trans footprint of the transducer should be tilted. But uh, the, <laughs> the position will be at the third intercostal space. Only. Same, ditto same. So for the apex also? Apex also, also position would be same. You just have to do a rotation. Uh, uh, for the short axis view? Ape apical window, you don't have to do a tilt. You have to rotate. In short axis view, you have to tilt the footprint. No, no, sir. For short axis, I'm, I'm uh, asking for short axis view at the apex. Short axis view so at the apex. Short axis. Sorry. Footprint okay. towards left hip. And uh, pancreatic muscle. Hello. And at the papillary muscle. I will not be able to listen to you clearly. Your mic is uh, ricocheting badly. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Uh, you can call me up. Uh, Harsh, uh, Neeraj, I can talk to you later on. Let me take up other questions. Dr. Ravi Bhatt Mahajan. Dr. Ravi Bhatt Mahajan. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, sir. What is leading edge and trailing edge? Leading and trailing edge will come in measurements. Okay, sir. Dr. Somnath. Hello, sir. What? Uh, which, is, which is the best view to look for pericardial effusion is one question. And plaques another question and is... Plaques and subcostal view. Plaques and subcostal. Correct. Another question is, in plaques view, how to differentiate between the pleural effusion and pericardial effusion? How do you see a difference between pleural and pericardial effusion? We'll come back to that later on. I can say in one single line, pleural effusion and pericardial effusion differentiation is pericardial effusion not, will not go behind the left atrium. Okay. Left atrium does not have any pericardium. Pleural effusion will go behind the left atrium. We'll come back to this particular thing during our pericardium. Okay. 
डॉक्टर राजेश कुमार तिवारी सर हाउ टू मेक आर ए आर बी इन्फ्लो व्यू वेरी गुड राजेश लुक एट मी लुक दिस इज माई ट्रांसड्यूसर दिस इज क्लैक्स विंडो यस सर so if i'm keeping my plaques window like this here is my rvra yes so let this footprint looks towards rvra like this it is called intercostal space if my footprint looks towards my rvra it will be rvra inflow view matlab plaques view mein thoda sa niche ki taraf tilt karna hai probe ko to ra rv inflow view banega ye footprint hai yes sir उस फुटप्रिंट को आरवीआरए दिखाना है ओके okay. हम परपेंडिकुलर रखे हुए हैं जी जी उस फुटप्रिंट को आरवीआरए दिखाना है ओके ओके सर आई आई विल ट्राई टुमारो टुमारो इट बी देयर यस ग्रेट जी डॉक्टर चंद्रिका नायक Hello, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know that whatever view we have taken is the right view. Means, who will? How do we know that we have taken a perfect view? What is uh, the? Is there any? Uh... Uh, to begin with, when I started doing echo choreography in eighty four, I was as good as you are. <laughs> so it's only a practice which will make you perfect. Over a period of time, we'll start telling you which view is correct, which view is wrong. at this particular time what we ask you to make is just make a views so that you are able to see lv la iota rv ra so at least try you have whole one week to make this views and you know what i always say is whatever you have been doing give your lunch to another person identify a very beautiful young man who can eat your lunch and sleep for a one hour and you practice every day one hour during lunch time on that particular person i'm sure you are taking a very good lunch back to your place of work give that lunch to that particular person <clears throat> when i was working in thomas jefferson after my nights i used to go to my echo department where is to work for night calls i used to get coupons i used to give coupons to the people who were technicians and those guys used to eat my lunch and they used to sleep on a couch and they used to practice every day one hour during my lunch time so that's the best way of learning thank you so practice do it we'll meet meet every week we are going to meet all right yeah dr shamshul kumar डॉक्टर शमशुल कुमार गो हेड डॉक्टर नीरज डोटके हेलो नीरज गो हेड सर रिगार्डिंग दी आईपीसी नॉर्मल सी वुड वी बी लर्निंग द मेजरमेंट फॉर आईपीसी एंड कंप्रेसिबिलिटी और इफ नॉट देन विल यू प्लीज इलेबोरेट विल शो द मेजरमेंट हाउ टू मेजर द आईपीसीज today is mo 2d next topler third is a measurement okay thank you dr parful chajar sir uh, will you please explain tilting method again explain what tilting sir tilting method okay i'll show you look at me then look this is a footprint of a probe correct yes sir normally this probe will have a wire over here okay if i put my this footprint on my chest this is left third intercostal space index marker 11 o'clock position on my chest till it has to look at rv ra so rv ra is over here i say let the footprint looks to yes. rv ra i don't say tilt let the footprint looks towards rv ra Okay. Then back. Then same R V R A. So my footprint is looking towards R V R A. Similarly, if I'm short axis view, my index marker is at two o'clock two o'clock position. 
let the footprint looks towards my left hip. So what I'll be getting? Apex from here, papillary muscles from here, and mitral valve from here. If the footprint looks towards aorta, I'll be getting aorta. So instead of the word tilt, I say let the footprint looks towards aorta. Mitral valve is right left third intercostal space. Then footprints towards my left hip, it'll come papillary muscle as well as apex. But okay. tilt has to be as small as we are driving a car for taking a turn to left end or right hand side. Minimal. Because the structure will disappear immediately. All right. Okay, thank you. All right. Dr. Shamshul Kumar. Sir, I want to know supra-external view, sir. How to detect aortic dissection or in time anterior, sir? Dr. Shamshul, the supra window is, let me just take off my tie. Allow me for a second. I'll be showing a live demonstration for all these things. So this is my suppression window. Enlarge your image. Okay, sir. So this is my suppression window. How aorta comes? Aorta comes like this, goes up, then bend posteriorly and down. Okay. Aorta does not go like this. Aorta goes anteriorly, then take a rotation and goes posteriorly. Correct. If this is my footprint, so I'm putting at this slightly towards right hand side in the suprasonal window. So I'll be looking at ascending aorta. Index marker at one o'clock position. So I'm measuring my ascending aorta. Now, instead of ascending aorta, if it's slightly footprint towards right hand side, I'm looking at descending aorta. So just a footprint towards right hand side and footprint towards left hand side will give you ascending and descending. And some people will have a very good suprasonal window in both the, both the views can be seen very easily. Another good point is just put a pillow behind the shoulder of a patient. Extend his neck. <coughs> Once you extend his neck, his suprasonal window would be very clear. Third important thing is don't press your transducer on the suprasonal window. <clears throat> Fourth is be very careful in adult population because they have significant cervical spondylosis. So your question is one o'clock index marker, slightly towards right hand side ascending aorta, left hand side is descending aorta. Now, what is you're looking for? Dissection of aorta. Yes, sir. The three type of dissection of aorta. One is as localized to ascending. Second is localized to descending. And third, all of them. Majority of descending as dissection of aorta, they are localized to ascending aorta and whole of the part. So I always say go to plaques window. Look, this is plax window. Okay. So this is aortic valve. So where the dissection will happen? Either at coronary artery level or beyond the coronary artery level. If you happen to see two valves over here, okay. think of a dissection. God will never give you two aortic valve. If you happen to see two aortic valve over here, it means you are looking at dissection of aorta. Okay. And most important part of dissection of aorta is Look at the peripheral pulses. We are gradually giving away our clinical diagnosis. Sit okay. back in. Yes, All right. Yes, Thank you, sir. Okay, dear. Dr. Raghavendra Khanapur. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, sir, good evening. Uh, sir, like. Uh... Uh, the thing like while explaining uh, the I mean footprint sir and the rotation uh, we had confusion sir like uh, when you say right I mean that will be focused to the left 
so following that i had some confusion i think i'm not sure sir whether other people had confusion in that or not but uh, when you focus to the index i mean marker to the uh, uh, 11 o'clock position instead it will be to the 1 o'clock position i don't know sir like whether right and left uh, we are like i find it difficult sir to follow okay uh, can you see my image over here yes sir what is this so that will be a 11 1 o'clock position now forget about this one o'clock position here is a watch yes sir one o'clock position this yes, is nine o'clock position yes sir this is three o'clock position forget about my face now ah yes, sir yeah that we had a there is a mirror in his in uh, front mirror. camera so this is reverse uh, reverse showing yes sir yes sir this is 12 this is 3 this is 9 this is 6 if my index is over here like this i'm saying 11 o'clock position oh, yes sir yes. because there is using front camera of the system we are getting mirror images so this is basic this is front camera showing the this is a basic problem of uh, looking at the images index marker 11 o'clock positions means at 11 o'clock position it should don't look at my shoulders or right and left hand side look okay, at this watch over here yes sir 12 6 3 nine right sir okay i think i'm able to clear you all this yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you dr tanay surjan uh, sir can you please again explain how to view ivc very important tanay very simple way of looking at uh, <coughs> ivc is let me go back to that picture again this is my subcostal window correct i have made subcostal window by keeping index marker at 3 o'clock position my transducer almost parallel as in four chamber view parallel and slightly towards right hand side so what happens what we see rv ra inflow view here is rv here is ra in rv ra subcostal window now what i am going to do is rotate this transducer at the same position index marker from 3 o'clock position i gradually rotate to 2 and 1 yes sir you know ivc is on this side ivc is over here behind the hand so what i am going to do is i am rotating my transducer from here to here yes sir as soon as i'll rotate my transducer i'll start seeing my ivc okay sir do it whatever i am telling you go back and practice next 7 days you have a practice at your place of work dr neeraj go ahead some question more uh, sir uh, i just wanted to say that when you were showing this uh, on your uh, shirt probably the problem is uh, the three o'clock uh, the pointer you are showing we are actually getting it as nine o'clock probably this is because of the mirror image of whatsapp but during the lecture it becomes very difficult to understand so if if we get it on a uh, something like and uh, next week i'll show you a live recording yes sir yes i think that will solve your problem right yes What definitely what i'm going to do is keep my hand movement on one side of the image like i'll make this kind of a sector one sector is one sector my hand movement okay sir so another thing i wanted to ask uh, regarding the uh, 16, 16 segments and the blood supply of the uh, respective walls of the uh, left ventricle <laughs> it was slightly uh, overwhelming uh, because probably uh, the time constraint where can we find it sir, to uh, read and Practice. We send you a hand booklet on your. Uh, yes, sir. So, yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, you flip off the images. Wait a minute. I'll show you. Like, if you happen to go to that booklet, I don't yeah. have to go anywhere. Okay. Give me a second.
So uh, go to that booklet. They'll give you everything. Okay. Okay, so one more thing. I just wanted to clear. In the two chamber view, we look for inferior wall and anterior wall. Correct. And in three chamber view, we look for anterior septum and posterior wall. Posterior wall. Yes. Thank you, sir. Doctor Ripon. Uh, sir, uh, how to identify the pericardium and and. How to identify the pericardium? Uh, in Pilex view or? Um, let me just, just give me a second and let me open up my pericardium topic. I think there's no other way because everybody is asking the same question again and again. So I'll show you both pericardium as well as uh, pleural and pericardial Okay, sir. Can you see my slides now? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, look, this is what the visceral and parietal pericardium. Here is parietal pericardium, here is visceral pericardium, and there is a potential space in between. Correct? Now, this is, is which view, sir? Subcostal window. Subcostal window. Okay. Visceral, parietal, and there is some echo density in between. Now, same thing, acute pericarditis with pericardial effusion. Somebody was asking how to differentiate pleural with pericardial effusion. Look, pleural effusion will stop short of left atrium. So, it will terminate over here. Pericardial effusion will be seen behind left atrium. So, if I have to show you a slide... This is what the pericardial effusion is. So here is the LA. It has stopped short of LA. This is descending aorta. This is plax view. And this is all pleural effusion. Clear? So this is thickened peri pericardium. This is visceral pericardium. Look how thick it is. This is parietal pericardium. So we see both in subcostal window as well as in apical. Oh, sorry. Plaxing. Clear? Yes, sir. Many things will come automatically over a period of time. Just a beginning today. Uh, look, I can't identify this guy who is 8950812512. Uh, sir, can we uh, get an information about M mode? Listen. What is your name, gentlemen? Sir, Dr. Sripath Kore. Dr. Kore, next time you will be Mark absent, you know. Do you know that? If you log in with this number 89508125, Google will not identify you. Sorry, sir. I will. Uh... Next time, then don't tell us ki, like we are marking you absent, you know. We will not be spending time in taking your attendance. There will be automatic attendance would be there. <laughs> 
अच्छा गो हेड व्हाट्स अ क्वेश्चन सिर पर पूरे सर व्हाट इज इज देयर एनी इनपुट अबाउट एम मोड इन कमिंग लेक्चर्स या इनपुट ऑफ एम मोड वुड बी देयर व्हेन वी विल टॉक ऑफ मेजरमेंट्स द एम मोड विल कम ऑटोमेटिक ओके सर थैंक यू सर so any questions anybody from bangladesh has not asked any question till now either they have learned everything or they have not learned every, anything sir is there any tricks to get subcoastal view easily because when i am trying to do this i always face difficulty वेरी सिंपल ट्रिक डॉक्टर होमायरा आज द पेशेंट टू बी फास्टिंग फॉर सम टाइम लार्ज फुल एबडोम विल नॉट लेट यू डू अ गुड सब कॉस्टल विंडो द लेग शुड बी फोल्डेड एंड पेशेंट शुड हैव रियली रिलैक्स एबडोम एंड वी शुड बी पैरल टू द हार्ट एज मच एज पॉसिबल we'll show you during our hands on session go back and learn it will be coming to october in your hands on session then we'll be possibly doing it okay thank you sir thank you anybody else sir hello neeraj yes sir uh, sir for the subcostal uh, view uh, are the like the pointer should be at 3 o'clock position uh, at base okay. you know? so uh, will we be looking at the uh, this is this view is basically uh, for the free wall of right ventricle rv free wall contraction okay and in the suprasternal view uh, do we have to uh, go directly perpendicular to the patient's uh, neck 100% perpendicular okay yes thank you Okay, guys. No more questions. Shall we stop it over here? May I have the pleasure of thanking you all and see you again next week. Thank you, sir. All Thank right. Thank you, sir. Good Thank night, you, sir. Thank you, Shabha Kher. See you next week. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you